Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for coming to another episode of Worked Heat Transfer Examples. Today, we'll be looking at a heat exchanger that's used to cool truck coolant using cross-flow air. Both fluids are unmixed. We're told the temperature and the flow rate of the atmospheric air that enters the heat exchanger. We also know the temperature and the flow rate of the water that enters on the hot side of the, tr of the heat exchanger. Here we're going to assume that water is the truck coolant. We're given the effective heat transfer coefficient and the total area of the heat exchanger and we're asked to find the exit temperature of the water. If we were sketching out the problem it would look something like this at the bottom of the page. We know what our inlet temperature on the hot side and our mass flow rate on the hot side is but we don't know the exit temperature on the hot side. We know the inlet temperature and the mass flow rate on the cold side, but we don't know the outlet temperature. We're given an effective heat transfer coefficient and we're told the total area of the heat, the heat exchanger. Finally, we're asked to find the temperature on the outlet on the hot side. Assumptions we'll make for this problem include that the system is at steady state that fluid and material properties are constant throughout the problem, that there are no losses to the surroundings, and that the fluid is unmixed on both sides, or that each side of the heat exchanger separates the flow into either channels or tubes. For heat exchanger problems, the first thing I like to do is look at this two by two matrix. We need to know our objective, typically sizing the heat exchanger or finding how much heat is exchanged, and then we need to determine a method. Are we using the log mean temperature difference for a counterflow or parallel heat exchanger? Or do we have more complicated geometry so we use effectiveness NTU? In this problem, we're looking to find the heat exchange because we know the size of the heat exchanger. And because it's a fairly complicated geometry, we're going to use the effectiveness NTU method. So now I know which checklist I can use to solve this problem. The general process for effectiveness NTU when I'm trying to find the heat transfer is to pick the geometry, find the big C's, calculate NTU, find effectiveness, calculate Q max, and then calculate Q actual. First, I'm going to pick the geometry. In this problem, we have a cross-flow heat exchanger, and we know the hot flow is unmixed or separated into tubes, and the cold flow is also unmixed, separated into channels. Eventually, I'm going to use the definition of NTU to find the NTU, and then I'm going to use the fact that I know NTU to find the effectiveness. So I look on table 11.3 for an equation that gives me effectiveness as a function of NTU. This is a function of the geometry of the problem. So I have a cross-flow heat exchanger that's unmixed on both sides. So I look at the cross-flow part of the table. I see that there's an equation for fluids that are both unmixed. And I have an expression for effectiveness as a function of NTU. To use this expression, I need to know the ratio of the fluid heat capacities, big C, and I need to know NTU. First, I'll look for big C sub R. That's the next thing on my process flow chart. In order to find big C, we need to know specific heat. Now the problem is specific heat is a function of the average temperature on the hot side and the average temperature on the cold side. We don't know these average temperatures because we only know the inlet temperatures and we don't know the outlet temperatures on either side. But we know that the outlet temperatures have to be bounded by the maximum temperature in the heat exchanger, that's the inlet temperature on the hot side, and the maximum and the minimum temperature in the heat exchanger, which is the inlet temperature on the cold side. So at least I know a range where my T average needs to be. Looking at the cold side, I'm going to find properties for air 
I know that my average temperature has to be somewhere between, say, 300 and 350 degrees Kelvin. I look at the specific heats and I find that specific heat is a very weak function of temperature in this case. So I'm going to take the average value of 1008 joules per kilogram Kelvin. I put that into my equation for big C, sub C, and I find that it's 534.25 watts per Kelvin. Now I move to the hot side. Again, I know that I have to be somewhere between 300 and 350. My fluid now is water. I see that the specific heat in this region is a stronger function for temperature than it is for than it was with air, but it still doesn't change that much. So I'm just going to pick 325 degrees Kelvin, and I'll find what the specific heat is in that case. I'll put it into my equation, and I'll get that big C sub H is 108.71 watts per degree Kelvin. So now I know my big C's, and I got to find which is the maximum and which is the minimum. In this case, big C sub H is smaller than it is on the cold side. So C min is on the hot side, and C max is on the cold side. I find the ratio by taking C min over C max, and in this case, it's 0.203. Next, I calculate my NTU from the definition of NTU. Sometimes this requires calculating the effective heat transfer coefficient. We can use an internal flow analysis to do that, but in this case, we're given the effective heat transfer coefficient. So I can just put all these values into my calculator and find that the number of transfer units is 0 0.49. Now, I can use NTU and C to find effectiveness. I've got this expression based on the geometry of my heat exchanger. Now I know everything that I need to know for this equation. I can put the numbers into my calculator, simplify it a little bit, and then find that the effectiveness is 0 0.371. Now I would like to use the effectiveness to find the actual heat transfer. But before I do that, I need to know Q max. Q max is going to be C min multiplied by the biggest possible temperature difference in the heat exchanger. That's the hot inlet temperature minus the cold inlet temperature. I know these values, so I put them into my calculator and I can find Q max. Now I want to find the actual heat transfer. Armed with the definition of effectiveness and Q max, I can see that the actual heat transfer is going to be the effectiveness times Q max. I know both of these values, I put them into my equation, and I find that the actual heat transfer is just about 1,815 watts. But that's not what the problem asked us. Instead, we are supposed to find the outlet temperature on the hot side of our heat exchanger. Now I can use the actual heat transfer, and that's going to be Cp times delta T, or in this case, big C on the hot side, times T hot in minus T hot out. I can isolate for T hot out, put some numbers into my calculator, and find the exit temperature on the hot side. In this case, just over 58 degrees Celsius. Note, that I had to assume what this outlet temperature was in order to find Cp. So in this case, it's pretty close to our estimate. We could iterate to increase accuracy, but remember that the specific heats were pretty weak functions of temperature in this range, so I don't think it would change our answer very much. This is actually all the problem asks us to do, but I just want to check my assumption on the cold side too, so I can find I can use Q actual to find the outlet temperature on the cold side as well, just like I did on the hot side. And here, the cold outlet temperature is 33.4 degrees Celsius. Again, I can check my assumption, and I can see that it's not exactly the temperature that I picked, but remember that specific heat for air was a very weak function of temperature, so I don't think this would change my answer 
at all. So, Gabrielle was asking if we wanted another joke. And even if we don't, here it is, although it's more of a riddle than a joke. A word I know is six letters. If you remove one letter, 12 remains. Any idea what the answer is? I'll give you a hint. Any more guesses? Dozens. If you remove the S from dozens, you get dozen, and a dozen is 12. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time on Worked Heat Transfer Examples.